All right guys, what is going on? It's Jacob here. We're back with another video. Today's video, you know, has been made thousands and thousands of times. I'm sure you can find it from thousands of people on YouTube, but with my own channel sort of, you know, growing a little bit faster than it has in the past, um, that, that subscriber curve is slowly, slowly going up. So I thought, I thought it was about time that I put my own spin on how to build muscle and in my opinion, it comes down to three major keys, and I'm going to cover them in this video. Nice, short, concise video with you know 100% honest information for you to then take into the gym and put yourself in the best position to make some good gains. Nothing can stop me. I'm all the way up. Oh. Alright, so my three major keys for muscle growth, we're talking stimulus on the muscle using progressive overload in the gym. So what that means is obviously stimulating the muscle group you actually want to build. Um, if we're going in there to train arms, we're going to be training arms, you know, nice form, good form. I'm not going to tell you the exact rep range or training style that's going to get you the best results. Personally, I've stuck to hypertrophy based training. So, you know, getting that pump keeping the pump for the entire workout. If I'm talking rep ranges, numbers, uh, you know, it's eight to 15 reps on most sets. Um, I'll probably hit at least, you know, 15 to 20 sets on that particular muscle group. And I'll, you know, hit each muscle group at least once, if not twice a week. So if you put all of those, you know, all of those techniques into place, I'm sure it'll put you in good stead to build muscle. Now, as far as, you know, that's, that's stimulus. Um, there's all different types of stimulus, but as far as progressive overload is concerned, what I'm talking about there, I'll give you an example. Let's say you go in, you start training some arms, um, you haven't been lifting long, you might, you might grab a, a 20 kg barbell and do four sets of 10 reps, okay? And then you might go over to the, the dumbbells, grab 10 kilo dumbbells, do another four sets, of 10 reps and you know when you're first starting in the gym you don't need to do 20 sets per ex per body part you know eight sets might do you well because obviously progressive overload means not only upping the weight that you use it means upping the volume so that's upping the reps and sets and you know in 10 years time you might be hitting 30 sets per body part but at the start you definitely don't need to be doing that so right at the start you know eight 12 sets per body part like i said once you start you know, let's say you hit eight to eight to twelve reps with that ten kilo barbell. I'm sure on that fourth set, you're you're probably going to be down to about eight reps. Over time, over time, you know your your rep range is going to go up. Let's say you start getting 14, 15, 16 reps on every set. You're not going to want to continue going up to 20, 30, 30 uh, reps per set. You're going to want to up the weight, so possibly bring the barbell up to maybe 22.5 kgs or even possibly 25 kgs. Um, early on in your lifting career, you know, those jumps, those increments can be quite high. As you get on and as you start lifting for a long time, um, those increments are gonna, are gonna decrease for sure. But the principle still remains progressive overload in the gym. You know, someone training in the gym for 10 years, they've been training for 10 years, they're still looking to progressively overload in the gym. So, you know, that 20 kilo barbell will be pushed up to 22.5. You'll once again, your rep range will come right back down from you know 15 back down to eight to 10, and slowly, slowly you'll build it back up again, get up to the 15 rep range, bring it back down again, go to the 25 kilo barbell, and you know continue like that. And it's not just for biceps; that's for bench press, that's for deadlifts, that's for any exercise. Progressive overload and stimulating the actual muscle group that you want to stimulate is going to be key for muscle growth. Now. Couple that with good nutrition. Now good nutrition, I can, I can sort of break into two parts. You've got being in a caloric surplus. So obviously building muscle, you're gonna to need to be taking in more energy than you exert on a particular day. If you're gonna be trying to lose weight, you're gonna to wanna to be taking in less energy than you exert on a particular day. So being in a caloric surplus is obviously key. Now, as far as how you break up your calories into macronutrients. You know, each, each calorie is, is broke up into macronutrients. Each food group is broke up into three macronutrients. We're talking protein, carbs, and fats. Now, one number I do keep consistent in my diet, whether that's cutting muscle, whether I'm trying to cut body fat or whether I'm trying to build muscle, is my protein amount. 
And that is the number that I'm gonna cover with you today. So, you know, to make it really easy, I'm just gonna tell you guys one gram of protein per pound of body weight. Now I've heard of people go under that, I've heard of people go over that. But personally, you know, if we're talking from personal experience for the last five years, my body weight has been within, you know, 200 to 225 pounds, let's say. So my protein amount every single day for the last five years has been, you know, up around the 220 20 gram mark. So if you're at 180 pounds and you're looking to bulk to 220 pounds, I would, you know, use the figure of the weight that you're going to get to. So, you know, don't have 180 grams of protein, have 220 grams of protein. And you know, it's probably not gonna make that much difference, but you do need protein, obviously, for, you know, protein synthesis to occur in the body. You need protein for that recovery. What you're doing in the gym with that stimulus is you're literally tearing the muscle down. You're tearing the muscle fibers, the little fibers in there. Over, and then you go home, you sleep, you eat well, you recover, and slowly, slowly, those little fibers, they form little scar tissue, and they, they heal over that slight bit bigger and that slight bit stronger. It's just like in Dragon Ball Z, man. Anything that doesn't kill you makes you stronger, right? So you're burning these muscles. You really gotta, you've got to, you've got to fall in love with the burn, man. You know, it's, it's, that burn on those last few reps is the, is the, the tearing down of the muscle fibers and that's what you got to do. There's no way, there's no way around it. You, I see too many guys going in the gym and they're not even sweating, you know. Um, those last few reps on, on your working sets are going to have to be balls to the wall if you want the maximum, you know, muscle fiber recruiting. So, that's nutrition. As far as carbs and fats go, obviously you're still going to want to be in a caloric surplus. Fats, I tend to keep to a minimum. So if I'm going to give you concrete numbers on fats, I would say 0.3 to 0.4 grams per pound of body weight. So, you know, for me at, at 200 pounds, I'm going to be taking in 200 to 220 grams of protein. I'm going to be taking in 60 to 80 grams of fat, although I do tend to go over that. But, you know, that's just me. If I'm going to have a client who's going to be working with me closely, I'm going to say 0.3 to 0.4 grams per pound of body weight. And carbs, you know, makes up the rest. So if you need to be hitting 3,500 calories a day to make sure you're in that caloric surplus, you've got 200 grams of protein, which is 800 calories. You've got 80 grams of fat, which is, what's, 8, 9, 72, 720 calories. So that's 1,520 calories from just your protein and fats. Now you have the fun part, you add in the carbs. So, you know, if we're going for 3,500 calories and we've only got 1,520 that's taken already, you've got 2,000 calories worth of carbs that you can bring in. So, you know, that is, how many is that? That's, that's like 500 grams of carbs. So, for this particular person who wants to put on muscle and doesn't want to put on too much fat, They've found their base metabolic rate being 3,000 calories a day. They're going to add 500 onto that to make sure they're in a caloric surplus, but not too high that they're going to put on too much body fat. You know, um, as I said, 200 grams of protein, 80 grams of fat, and 500 grams of carbs. And that's going to put you in really, really good stead to, to, put, to, to build muscle. Now, as far as nutrient timing goes, I would say that carbohydrates you'd want to aim around your training. This is, you know, because your body needs carbohydrates to function. If you're going to be pushing a lot of weight, you're going to be exerting a lot of energy. You need those carbohydrates to, the, to give you strength in the gym to make sure you progressively overload and put on muscles. So that's nutrients. The last thing I'm going to cover is rest and recovery. Um, possibly the most overlooked, but the most important you know, factor in, in building muscle effectively and as fast as possible. We're talking sleep, we're talking, you know, a few supplements that you can add in as far as recovery of, of your joints and things like that. And we're also talking, you know, how much time between hitting that same muscle group again. So first thing is sleep. I need seven hours of sleep a night to function properly. If I have three hours of sleep in a night, I can get through the next day. And if I have another three hours of sleep the next night, I can most probably get through the next day as well. But if I have four or five days of, you know, three, four hours of sleep a night, it just creeps, creeps, creeps up on me. And by the end of the week, I'm fucked. 
I, my training's, you know, suffering. Um, my eating's usually suffering. I'm compensating for the lack of sleep with eating shittier foods. Um, and, you know, it's just no good. So if you have no choice but to function on four hours of sleep a night, well, I can't really say much. But if you have, you know, if you have the choice and you have the opportunity to sleep seven hours a night, I would say that's going to put you in the best, you know, best position to wake up each morning with a nice recovered body to go and hit it again. So with that being said, each muscle group I like to hit at least once, if not twice a week, especially for natural bodybuilding. So, you know, once you hit that muscle, you start the protein, you start the repair process. So once you, once you leave the gym straight after training your muscle, the repair process has started. And that's when you need to start taking in your nutrients to, you know, to, to facilitate that repair process. So Personally, it takes probably two to three days for my, if I've gone really hard on that muscle group, it takes two to three days for that muscle group to feel sweet again. And then, you know, it's up to me when I want to go back in the gym. Um, it's up to my schedule. If I've got, you know, if I've got enough time that week, I will try and hit each muscle group twice a week. If I don't have enough time, you know, once a week is sufficient. Um, and in the middle is that sweet spot, but it depends on how much time you've got. And you know you can group two muscle groups in one workout. You can group three muscle groups in one workout. You know there's there's different there's different um, workout splits to accommodate your your you know free time. Um, but that's up to you. So the third thing on recovery, you've got sleep. You've got time between hitting the same muscle group again. And the third thing is supplementation. So. Um, you know, supp the supplement industry is huge. Uh, there's there's a supplement for everything these days. There's you know sleep supplements. There's pre workouts. There's protein powders. There's aminos. There's test boosters. There's all sorts of shit. As far as you know, what I know works and what I would recommend for for my clients. And you know, this is all about my personal experience. So I take a fish oil supplement. We're talking about you know nothing nothing crazy, nothing really fancy, just from the supermarket. Um, I would probably take probably three to six grams a day of fish oil, um, especially, you know, you'll know when you, when you start getting sore joints, it really fucks up everything. So especially like you start getting a niggly elbow and you know, every tricep movement is affected, chest movements, shoulder movements, everything's affected. So you want to really try and, you know, stamp that out. And, um, I do that through taking a fish oil supplement as well as that I've got glucosamine which is sort of a more extreme supplement, but it's, it's actually for uh, people with arthritis and it's a temporary pain relief, but it does work really well. So if you, you know, slam three or four of those in the morning, um, it, it should, you know, help, help loosen you up before a workout. So those are the two recovery supplements I take. Um, that's it guys, that's that's building muscle. I've talked for way, way too long. If you've made it to the end, thank you. Put these practices in place and I'm sure you'll you'll be put in good stead to, to build muscle. Um, if you are looking for a, a personal trainer, an online coach, just know that, you know, make sure they've got results. You know, make sure they have, have and yes, they may have testimonials, but they might be fake. And look at their pictures, they might be fucking Adobe games. You know, there's no Adobe games around here. What you see is what you get. It's 100% real. I'm a natural bodybuilder. One day, I hope to be a champion natural bodybuilder. And the way I'm going to get there is putting these exact principles in place. So good luck. Train hard. Have a great day. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.